Okay, let me quickly describe your tests here. <clears throat> and if you look at the authorization pages spec that we had before, this looks a lot different than it uh, did when we, we last like, uh, and it's got this extra thing called it behaves like. And it's, it's a little weird. It's not my favorite way of doing things, but it's the only way I can kind of get things to work the way I want. So it behaves like is kind of like a method that's an extra it, okay? And so it's an it where the behavior is defined by the string, redirects to a login. And the parameters are inside of these let values right here. So let me go to spec support back to the login page where uh, we have this shared examples redirects to a login. That's where the connection is between those two because it's the same text here as in the other one. It says, oh, I'm going to run this. And there's a, a couple things here that I'm going to go over in detail, but this basically is two parts. One is, is this part right here where we're going to visit that path and this is the first parameter that you have to set, browser path, and it's gonna just make sure that there's a warning alert and that it tries to have you sign in. Then there's the second part which says direct visit to HTTP path. <laughs> and this is dealing with the fact that not everyone who accesses your website has to go through a web browser. In fact, someone who's malicious is probably not going to try to go through a web browser, but they're actually going to try to use some command line tools or some tools carefully crafted to do that. And so if we think about how our system works uh, with users, and let's just think about editing users right now, uh, we have a specific way that we want people to do. We want to, them to get this form, and then that form is going to post to this create action. And so we don't have any links in our website to this post. And so you might think, oh, great, we don't have to test that. But we do have to test it because if we don't protect that post just as much as we protect this get, then someone who is crafty can go around our form and just post whatever data they want to this action and not um, deal with, with our protection. So we have to protect this user's create action just as much as we protect this user's edit action here. And so that's what this is trying to do. Uh, what we're doing is we have a, a path called direct path that's the, the URL that we're trying to access directly, not through the web browser. And this is the method that we're going to access it through. So for uh, creating, it would be post. For editing, it would be patch. And, and so we have three variables that we have to set. We have to set our browser path. We have to set the, the method that we're going to use to try to get around the browser and the route or path that we do that method for. And all we do here is we have this expect redirect with alert, which is a, a method right up here. Um, and what that does is we expect to be redirected to this path with this kind of alert, a warning. So you can see what we do is we expect the response to redirect to the path we receive. Then we actually do the get because remember this is kind of like a redirect get, uh, a post redirect get pattern. So we've done something, we've been redirected to that path, and now we just expect that body to, ha to have this type of uh, alert that we had before. So there's two parts. There's the browser actions and there's the direct HTTP actions getting ar around the browser. And um, in general, we're gonna always assume to, to test this method. You can turn it off if you want. That's what this option uh, is. And most of the time we're going to assume that you turn uh, you use the browser. But you can also turn that off as well. So this is just setting those options. S default skipping the browser's false. Uh, default doing the direct action is, is true. And so in default we do both of these but you, you more easily turn this off than this one off. And so if we go back to, uh, whoops, edit spec 
features authorization pages. We can look at this again now that we've seen that. So when we say it behaves like redirects login, it goes to that thing. And we've got our three values set here. We set our browser path to the edit. And then we can try to directly go around the browser by going to the patching to that user path right here. And so that's how this works. Now notice that we also have a situation where someone's logged in and they try to do a delete. Here, there is no browser equivalent for the delete because we don't access a form like we do for editing a user that we need to protect. All we need to do is protect that direct HTTP method. And so here we turn, tell it to skip our browser. And we set that to true right here. And so here with this method, we only have to pass the direct path and HTTP method. We can skip the browser path uh, variable. And so we have that for our non-authenticated users, for our authenticated users. And then this is a new category here where we authenticate a user and then try to edit a second user so that we make sure that we don't just check that someone's logged in, but they're logged in as the same user as they're trying to edit. And, and so that's the, the tests that you need to be able to pass next.